to go to another story, but as part of our daily focus uh, for year and uh, wrap ups, we're looking at major stories of the year. And our focus today is Limpopo, particularly the VBS saga, but also other related issues. And we were talking to our reporter, Mike Maringa, who's joining us from our studios in Polokwane. Mike, we usually uh, connect to you on the field somewhere. How does it feel to be in studio today? <laughs> <laughs> no, it 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 even uh, it, it it feels strange because we are used to be uh, on the field talking to the people, uh, getting uh, first-hand information. But in any case, we have managed to gather that, and that's why we are here today, so that we can talk at length, other than giving you very short packages. The the VBS story has really proved to be the big story uh, coming out of. Limpopo uh, this year, but not only was it big in Limpopo, it also had a national impact, with some people saying state capture began in Limpopo. Uh, what were the highlights for you covering this story? Look, um, it's a story that is it's ongoing, uh, because uh, when we first started with the coverage of VBS, it, it, it was when uh, the beneficiaries, people who invested at that bank, were sleeping outside to withdraw um, their investment. And unfortunately, at the time, uh, individuals could only withdraw about 1,000 rand a day. So it, it was very difficult for them. They had to sleep there uh, so that they can be the first in the morning to join the queue and withdraw their monies. Fortunately, the Reserve Bank came to their rescue. Their monies were moved to the net bank. A uh, majority of them were able to withdraw their funds. Some have left them there. Uh, but one other thing that we are looking at and we are still going to go around and cover at length it's uh, the issue of service delivery because let's talk of 1.2 billion in a rural province like Limpopo what could have the money done to the most rural to the people in need uh, a good example is the municipality that we um, visited yesterday the Guiana municipality we are talking of um, a municipality that has got a very good budget but yesterday when we were driving around the townships the states of roads there are very bad. Potholes are very big. You could you must see uh, vehicles traveling, uh, driving around um, the townships. They 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 find it. Uh, motorists find it very difficult to drive around their very own townships because you can see the roads are not serviced. Uh, we can't talk about the issue of water because it's a competency competence of the district municipality, and unfortunately, Mopani. It's not part of them. But we've got Vembe, which is um, one of the biggest uh, district municipalities in the province. They have invested over 300 million. And they've got a very big dam there called Nandoni. And you still have people around Vembe who do not have a clean running water in their yards. You still have people who are fetching water in rivers that are infested with crocodiles. And you ask yourself, how can authorities allow such to happen when they've got enough money? What was the priority? Was it VBS? Was it servicing the people that they always promised to render services to uh, uh, during uh, election time? Because if you look at the man manifestos of all these political parties, in the, in the forefront is the uh, uh, service delivery to the people, but there is no service at all. It's not only in uh, 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 the Nandoni Dam. We went to Malamlele as well under uh, Collins Chavan municipality. We, there's, uh, there's a community of Makuleke. They have visited that place about four times. People are washing and drinking in a very uh, dirty dam infested with crocodiles. And you ask yourself, why do these people still continue voting for the same party that is not uh, living to um, its promises? And it obviously goes back to the question that you asked yesterday. Why are people of Limpopo so loyal to the ANC? Maybe it's because of what they are promised before the elections. And it looks like after elections, it all ends there. But it's a story that we're still going to follow because uh, at the face value, we are now talking about mayors and few people who are suspended. Um, I, I saw um, a report from uh, advocate uh, um, Terumuta, who's um, uh, filing, uh, fi the filing report in, in effect that it's in court. It implicates more people, and it goes back to the forensic report that was released uh, last week by uh, Premier Matawata. Most of the things that are appearing on that report were not said in Premier, uh, in Premier uh, Matawata's report. Maybe there's a lot that we are still going to hear because 1.2 billion rent is gone. It cannot be accounted for. People still don't have services. But uh, also coming back to your questions, it was heartbreaking to talk to people who invested at VBS, 
who trusted the bank, who believed that um, uh, banking in, the, in a black-owned bank was the right thing to do only to learn that their money is gone and they cannot receive it if and when they want. But also the issue of service delivery. If you go to the most rural areas and people do not have water, you ask yourself, why should these people continue to vote? This really is heartbreaking. Mike, do you know if all the people, when the, uh, uh, when the um, South African Reserve Bank decided that it was going to close down VBS, it gave uh, South Africans an assurance that the individual depositors would get back all their money. Do you know if everybody has been able to access their monies? Yeah, um, on the day where, date when they were told that they can uh, now uh, continue to um, go to NetBank to withdraw their monies, we covered that story. A majority of them uh, did receive their money, but the problem is um, the figure was 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 was, um, was cut somewhere. It was uh, it's not um, everybody who received all their monies. They did receive, but there was a certain figure that you can withdraw. Part of the money is gone, just like with the municipalities that invested money and only only to be told that that money is gone and it will, it will not be recovered. So you still have individuals who uh, invested about half, half, half a billion rent and they were told that they can only withdraw uh, 300,000 or, or less. So it, it, it's, 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 it's a sad reality for most people, business people who were running their businesses through, um, uh, through that bank. But unfortunately, part of their money is gone. The little that they, they are receiving, maybe they will be able to make ends meet. But as it stands now, they are not receiving anything. I know it's a funny request to make on air, but maybe we should follow up that story in the new year about whether the allotted depo or, or depo uh, money you can take out, is it, does it mean the rest of your money is gone or does it mean you can go back and withdraw some more? Um, I think we, we need to interrogate that a little bit more, Mike. What do you think? Yes, that's what we'll be, inter uh, we'll be interrogating. But um, I think there's a directive from the Reserve Bank to say that um, they can only give so much. Unfortunately, that is what they can afford. And yeah. uh, the um, beneficiaries, depositors know uh, by, by now that they can only receive so much. I there's a lady that we spoke to. I hear what you're saying, but it's to in total contradiction to what both the Reserve Bank and the Finance Minister, I think, said in his, in his midterm budget speech, where he said the individual depositors would not be affected. But as I said, it's something to in interrogate in the new year. Mike, in your conversation, you mentioned the problem of water challenges as part of service delivery challenges. But there was also a bigger story running about how the water problems, water supply problems in Limpopo were due also due to mismanagement. Tell us about that story. Yeah, um, this one, the, the, the mismanagement part goes to uh, Mopani district. You'll, you'll, uh, you'll remember that Mopani was unable to um, uh, supply water to the people of Guiani. A decision was taken that they will have to draw water from Nandoni, which is a distance of about 60 kilometers. It's a um, project that started years back when Castle Matale was still the premier. And they, they, when the tender was advertised, uh, there were companies that were overlooked. They took this matter to court. But unfortunately, the, the company that was awarded the tender at the time was already halfway with the, with the project. And the court took a decision to allow that particular company, though uh, the tender was awarded irregular, to continue with, with the project. But halfway, that project was abandoned. The contractor was paid. Uh, it's then that uh, it's um, the Department of Water Affairs and uh, uh, and, uh, uh, Minister Nungula Mukonyani came in to, to the rescue of, 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 of that project. But unfortunately, the, the situation got worse uh, because uh, there were few companies that were, were awarded tenders there, in, including uh, Kato Civils. That project dragged for long, and we, we learned that the monies that were uh, reserved to cover that project uh, a balloon, the, 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 the figure became too high, the monies were paid at some point, it stalled. Katu couldn't continue with, uh, with that project. And as, as we speak now, billions have been spent. We are told the figure is around four billion now to draw water from Nandoni. It's, it's, a, it's only a distance of about 60 kilometers to Guyana. About four billion has been spent already. But people of Guyana still do not have water from, 
from Nandoni. So the, the Department of Water Affairs at the national level will have to account because um, they have taken powers from Mopani and Lipele Northern Water to um, distribute water to um, the people of Guyan. But we can't say the same about Vembe. Vembe has got a very big dam. They have got the, uh, if, if, if they were mismanaged, not mismanaging their funds, they will be able to um, distribute water to all the villages around that area because that dam has got the capacity to can do that district. Let's talk about the political side. Uh, the uh, Limpopo Premier Sten Matabata recently uh, it was, uh, it was said he was go they were going to write off a staggering, is it 217 million or 584 million of debt? Well, what's, what's happening in terms of the management of finances in the Limpopo government? Look, um, the, the Department of Treasury indicated last week that uh, there are municipalities that are, are, are not in, in a good financial shape. And they have decided to um, take responsibility and put some of them under administration. The Guyana municipality was supposed to be one, but um, at this current stage, we were told that they are not going to take that route, um, though they have financial challenges. It's one question that we posed to the new mayor yesterday to say um, uh, the union is saying that the, uh, the coffers of the, of the municipality are... are, are are dry and they won't be able to pay workers and that was dismissed the mayor said that is not going to happen they do have enough funds in the in to to can run the municipality up until the next uh, fiscal but looking at the provincial departments you've got um, uh, the public works which has the highest budget we've got a lot of maybe it's over commitment we've got a lot of uh, projects that are, are underway now especially roads in the province uh, there have been a lot of protests about uh, roads that are connecting connecting districts and the Department of Public Works was weak, uh, okay. was was uh, looking at Mike, that. But at the, uh, thank you so much for giving us your time this morning. We would have loved to talk about more, as because clearly so much happened in the Limpopo province. But I'm sure we'll get a, a moment at another, uh, an, an opportunity at another time. But thank you so much, uh, Mike Maringa. Now the high.